welcome all of you in fact last class our last two three classes we started discussing extensively on two dimensional nmr after giving basic introduction to the concepts of 2d and the basic pulse sequence and how we interpret the 2d data and i took examples of you know 2d cosy spectra we started interpreting the 2d cosy spectra also many examples we took and we wanted to know how we can utilize the 2d cosy to get the connectivity information right from small molecules to big molecule into even uh, sh sugars glu glucose where alpha and beta isomers were there we started analyzing the spectra just using the concept of uh, correlation of two couple peaks see cosy basic uh, thing i have told you is cosy requires spins should be scalar coupled then there is a transfer of magnetization from one spin to another spin and then th this correlation information is reflected as a cross peak in the 2d cosy spectra so we knew how to analyze the 2d cosy spectra start with one of the peak where you are confident sit on the diagonal come vertically down go horizontally and then went go in a ladder manner and then you will be able to uh, almost interpret all the peaks from the spectrum so that way they, we can assign all the peaks of a given molecule and of course uh, after understanding quite a bit with that and also i told you about the dkf cosy certain variants of the cosy and the way we represent the 2d data magnitude mode double absorption mode etc and i said the double absorption mode is preferred for better resolution and dkf cosy of course is much better than cosy i told you you will get a sharp peaks and also peaks near the diagonal are not masked and we also saw some examples of uh, sharp small filip angle cosy long range cosy etc how we can get the coupling the correlation of the long range couplings or we get the relative sense of the coupling based on the direction and tilt of the cross peaks so a lot of things we discussed we'll go further today with another topic called total correlation spectroscopy called toxi in simple term taxi establishes connectivity among all the coupled partners of a given spin system this is a very simple statement in the cosy also we did the same thing remember i told you cosy establishes the correlation among the coupled partners immediate coupled partners in a given molecule we know one we is coupled to next one next one next one it goes like that systematically you have to go in a ladder manner whereas in the taxi is establishes connectivity among all the coupled partners of a given spin system of course spin system we discussed long back while introducing even in the concepts of enamor itself of course in the context of toxi taxi i am telling you what is a spin system again a spin system is nothing but a set of protons in a chain of unbroken j coupling interactions that means i have a spin system one may be coupled a may be coupled to b b may be coupled to c like that it can go systematically all the spin should be should form a part of a coupled spin system one of the coupling may be zero let us say i take five four four spins 1 2 3 and 4 one may be coupled to two two may be coupled to three three may be coupled to four one four coupling may be zero doesn't matter but it is part of the coupled spin system so and there is a if there is a break in the chain then it forms a different spin system this also we discussed long back when we discussed the spin system Test just to give an example like this. Take an hypothetical molecule like this, and this forms a spin system because you see, C O three is coupled to C H two, which is coupled to this C H two, and this is coupled to this C H. Let us assume this C O three is not coupled to any of these things. So this forms a spin system. And similarly, this side, this C O three is coupled to this, coupled to this, and coupled to this. That forms another coupled spin system. And I assume the long range coupling of C O three to any of these protons is not there. there is no coupling at all that means ca3 forms an isolated spin system by itself so in this given molecule there are three coupled spin systems and taxi gives cross peaks among all the spins of a coupled partner in a given spin system for example and i do a taxi experiment i can get at a time cross peak from the, from this to this this to this this to this everything will be observed in one experiment remember when you are doing cosy you are going from here to here here to here here to here step by step you are trying to go to understand the correlation information to see of identify the coupled partners but taxi does everything in a single experiment that is a advantage what is a taxi pulse sequence 
of course it does the polarization transfer basically it is similar to Cauchy sequence only thing is instead of a second pulse we have what is called isotropic mixing what is an isotropic mixing I will explain to you soon. So, we do not have a hard pulse so, we have two hard pulses in the Cauchy 90 T 1 90 T 2 that is a Cauchy sequence, but here 90 T 1 and the isotropic mixing for a short duration we apply a soft pulse for a long duration and that is called a mixing pulse and during this mixing pulse something happens there is what is called isotropic mixing and this is the pulse sequence we use for toxin very simple pulse sequence, but the question is how does this simple pulse sequence works. Remember when we do this thing mixing pulse it is applied along this axis then we say the spin systems are locked along this axis. If the spins are brought from z axis to x let us say y axis and apply r f power here r f pulse at the b 1 power along this axis then we say all the spin vectors are locked along the r f axis along, along the b 1 axis. This is what the mixing pulse does it locks the spin system and it is a what is the duration for which you are going to apply the r f pulse this spin lock pulse it is a soft pulse very low power pulse for a constant phase for a long duration see and a long pulse for it for example hard pulse I told you when you want to observe proton NMR 90 degree pulse could be 5 to 8 microseconds I said carbon 13 maybe slightly more whereas here the long soft pulse is of the order of milliseconds 10 millisecond 20 millisecond 50 millisecond 80 millisecond like that it is of the order of several milliseconds that is the soft pulse we use that is a spin lock pulse. Now what happens in the spin lock? Okay, we apply a spin lock pulse then the question comes how does the magnetization transfer takes place among all the coupled spins and I say I said in the previous this thing here this is a RF pulse which is a continuous pulse like this soft pulse continuous pulse. Then I can imagine this RF pulse as if we have a sequence like this you know what is the sequence called it is a spin sequence a delay 180 pulse and a delay it is a spin echo sequence. Can we not imagine this mixing pulse a continuous RF pulse as if it is broken into a lot a innumerable number of spin lock pulses large number of spin lock pulses a nine, several 90 degree pulses with a minute delay between them so very small delay can I not think of that it is, a, it is nothing but a closely spaced 180 degree pulses with a delay between them and n such pulses n such spin echo sequences this is the way you can imagine in which case I could say each of this de delta 180 delta person uh, delta pulse sequence or uh, that block that particular uh, group block I will call it as a spin echo block. So, I can consider continuous RF pulse which you apply for mixing as nothing but a chain of a uh, huge number of spin echo sequences together that is what you can imagine of course you know with a homonuclear pulse what happens when I apply a spin echo we have discussed this during spin echo homonuclear pulse spin echo refocuses chemical shifts it does not refocus J couplings that is what I told you I discussed that it refocuses chemical shift but not the J couplings. So, there is no chemical shift evolution in the mixing time because after each spin echo sequence there is no chemical shift evolution other n infinite or n number of such sequences echoes as a consequence during the entire mixing period there is no evolution of chemical shift ok. All the spin vectors then remains locked along y axis because there is no evolution it does not move that does not persist. So, it there when there is no chemical shift offsets it does not start processing it gets locked along the y axis and a particular axis in which you are applying the RF pulse mixing pulse for the entire mixing period that means there is no net evolution at the magnetization entire mixing time ok. So, all the protons then experience the same effective field because there is no evolution of the chemical shift that means chemical shift differences are 0 it is as good as telling there is no chemical shift remember when I was explaining spin echo I took the example of two spins A and X and there was a uh, two different spins one way is on resonance other, other is off resonance but finally I showed both of them will you know spin chemical shift to get refocused and there would not be any difference in chemical shifts 
the exact linear. There is no chemical shift evolution and chemical shift difference is practically 0. And we are doing this in the spin lock period that means in the rotating frame. I did not discuss about the rotating frame in this course, but in one of the previous courses extensively I have discussed the rotating frame. Imagine when I bring the magnetization to x axis, I am already in the rotating frame and I am applying a, a spin lock pulse along the axis and then pin vectors get locked. Okay. So, there is no chemical shift evolution, difference of chemical shifts are 0, that is fine. Whatever the J coupling, remember in the homonuclear spin lock I discussed chemical shifts are refocused, but not J coupling, J couplings always continue to evolve after the 180 pulse. So, this is what happens. So, throughout the spin lock period, we have created a situation there is chemical shift evolution 0, but J coupling continuously evolve. It is similar to a free precision during the spin lock period, like a free precision there is only J lock, J coupling evolution and no chemical shift difference. That is what happens. Okay. What do you call a situation? We, we, we discussed about strong coupling and weak coupling. When I said strong coupling, the chemical shift difference between the coupled protons becomes smaller and smaller. It is almost comparable or less than the J coupling. But in this situation what is happening? All the coupled sp spins if you consider, there is no chemical shift difference at all. Whereas, the J coupling exists. That means, delta delta is 0, J coupling is present. What do you call the situation? This is the situation of what is called strong coupling. In the case of the strong coupling, there is no chemical shift here, only J couplings evolve. This is what spin lock pulse creates. It creates a situation of strong coupling. Then in which case, since there is no chemical shift, all the coupled spin lose their identity. You do not know which, which chemical shift belongs to which spin. If it is a not a spin lock period case, you can identify and say this is chemical shift of proton 1, 2, 3 like that. Here you cannot distinguish. The spins lose their identity at all. They are indistinguishable because chemical shifts are 0. And this strong coupling is induced on the entire spin system. This is what happens. So, spin lock pulse in summary remember creates strong coupling effect on all the coupled spins. And pictorially you can imagine like this. Let us say this is the one dimension NMR spectrum. So, many chemical shifts are there, couplings are there, different groups are there. You can find out what are the chemical shifts and the multiplicity pattern tells you J couplings. But when I do spin lock, what happens? All this chemical shift difference becomes 0, no chemical shift. Whereas, the splitting J coupling is still present and this is the situation created in the spin lock sequence. No chemical shift differences, but there exists J coupling and this, this is important on all the spins. The strong coupling phenomena, what it does? It creates an oscillatory exchange of magnetization among the coupled spins. During the spin lock time, what happens? This, there is a strong coupling phenomenon, spins do not know themselves, they are indistinguishable what they are, but there is a coupling. So, what will happen? There is an exchange of magnetization among them. Different spins give the magnetization to different spins, but only to coupled because there should be scalar coupling here. That is a necessary condition only among the coupled spins. If there are different groups of coupled spins, for a one coupled spin system, among them there is an exchange of energy. For the other coupled spin, there is even. But between these two spins, spin systems, there is no exchange of coherence that does not take place. So, the strong coupling creates a oscillatory exchange of coherence. Now, how it works, I will show you here pictorially for an AX spin system. Consider an AX spin system, two coupled spin system. See, the magnetization get completely transferred from A to X during the, during the process, the, during spin lock. When does it give? Complete transfer takes place after half the J coupling. The J coupling between A and, A and X spin, if it is J A X, half of that period is enough for the complete transfer of magnetization from A to X. Of course, I am taking A to X, but it could be other way also. But after some time, what will happen? It will start coming back. For it will give it from A, will give it to X. Then from after half the coupling, half J X, it starts coming back from X to A. This is what happens. So, this is a 
polarized in exchange in a two case, two spin case. But what happens if there is a bigger spin system, large number of protons, not only two, many spins are coupled, then what will happen? There is a continuous propagation of magnetization among the spins. Okay? One will give to other one, other uh, next week will give to next one like that. And this you can understand the propagation of magnetization pictorially like this. Let us say I am this is how I am calling it as a mixing time. I keep changing the mixing time, I keep on increasing the mixing time from some value minimum value to maximum value as I go down. First I will consider 5 spins are coupled among themselves. For a short mixing time here there is exchange of energy between A and B. I will start with A and then it will give energy to B, but simultaneously after some time it will also start coming back from B. So, A to B there is an exchange of energy for certain mixing time, but what I do is I will increase the mixing time to some, for some other value little bit more let us say from 5 millisecond I go to 10 milliseconds or even more. Then what happen not only from A to B then B also gives to C further next coupled partner it will give B will give it energy C, C, C will give it, give it back to B again and again B will give to A there is a cyclic phenomena A to B B to C then again C to B V to A this keeps on going like this a cyclic process is there and again increase it for some more time it goes to C from C it goes to D. So, A to B, B to C, C to D it goes on and then finally all the coupled spin the last coupled spin also will get the magnetization. What is happening here? Depends upon the mixing time the propagation of the magnetization depends it keeps transferring the magnetization from one spin to other one depending upon its coupling strength and also the duration because it also depends upon the coupling strength here. If it is larger there is a greater transfer of magnetization. If say, let us say this is 10 hertz magnetization transfer may be more let us say this is only 1 hertz then it is weak coupling as a consequence transfer of magnetization may be less. So, the mag extent of magnetization transfer depends upon the mixing time time for which you allow the spin system to exchange energy and also strength of the coupling both are important. So, this is how the magnetization gets propagated during the spin log among all the coupled spin system coupled spins are a given spin system okay this is what i should be always remember magnetization may travel in either direction in a spin chain it not way not always unidirectional it goes comes back goes comes back like that it is happening so there is a cyclic exchange of energy between them so what does it mean if A is it goes to A and come back to B, it goes to B and come back to C and then to A. That means, if I take a toxic spectrum, it is symmetric. But A is given to B means B is also given to A. Similarly, A gives to B, B gives to C, again it comes back to A. So, that means, whenever you see the correlation, there is always symmetrical about the diagonal. As a similar to Cosi, toxic spectrum is also symmetrical about the diagonal that is what you should understand. Next the question is when a such a situation is created when do the spins experience identical local fields in the sense they all behave as a, uh, you know uh, as if chemical shifts is 0 and everything behave having have experiencing a particular local field when does situation come that will come under a condition called Hartmann Hahn match that Hartmann Hahn match is given by this equation gamma of 1 spin with the rf power of that multiply by the rf power into gamma of the other one into multiply by the rf power of the other spin gamma a b1 a equal to gamma a1 x into b1 x if this condition is matched this is called a hot one hand match then there is local field experience at a and b both the sides nuclear sides is identical then you are not distinguishing these two spins then only there is a transfer of magnetization and for homonuclear case this is called Hartmann Hahn match homonuclear Hartmann Hahn this experiment is called ho ha ha homonuclear Hartmann Hahn. Same if you consider the heteronuclear spin identical experiment can be done it is called heteronuclear Hartmann Hahn called he, he ha ha 
these are the two experiments. This is nothing but the taxi experiment for homonuclear spins and uh, taxi experiment for the heteronuclear coupled spins. And both will happen takes place energy magnetization transfer only when there is a Hartmann Hahn matching. Okay. Now, always you should remember I have been telling you transfer of magnetization takes place only among the coupled spins, but no transfer of magnetization among different spin systems. Please understand if there is a group of spins coupled here several spins there is only exchange of energy among them and there is another spin there is exchange of energy among them and like that, but between these there is no exchange of energy that is not possible. So, the axis does not allow that. So, how do you imagine that? Imagine it is a 4 into 100 meter relay going on. What is happening? Each country you can consider the spin system. For example, you look at this one, this is Great Britain, this, this is another one, it is Japan, then we have Jamaica like that. What is happening? See, this Netherlands fellow, it found one spin system, Jamaica one spin system. Japan one and Great Britain one spin system. They are all running, but remember they are carrying a baton. What is baton? In NMR spin system, I call it as an energy. Baton is nothing but energy. So this spin can give this fellow can give baton to him. He has to give it to complete the race. So he will give baton to him. Similarly, Japan fellow will give baton to him, but he cannot give his baton to this fellow. So that's not allowed interspin exchange is not allowed. So, this is exactly the identical simile comparison for transfer of magnetization among the coupled spins in a toxi experiment. Each of them if you consider the spin systems they can there is a transfer of baton among their teammates like among our their uh, couple, all the spins of the same coupled spin system, but there is no transfer between them. This is how toxi works. And the spectra of three groups of different spin system I can show you take an example. I will consider yellow is one spin system, red one system and green one spin system. There are three different spin systems. Let us say this A group this spin system gives us to this type of spectrum. What is the spectrum? I do not know we will not worry about the interpretation hypothetical spectrum do not let us not worry about uh, valency bond matching whether reality of the existence of the molecule all those things. This is a hypothetical spectrum for spin system A. There are three protons there is coupling among them and this is the pattern I get. Now, we will go to B. B has two protons and two groups of protons are there that is for B. Go to C. There are three groups of protons and three chemical shifts and three groups of peaks. But in reality how what do you get when you record NMR spectrum of this molecule? You do not get this all of them individually, all of them are superposed and you get a spectrum. This is a conventional spectrum you get for this molecule. If you take the NMR spectrum, this is a conventional spectrum. So, what we will do is I will take this molecule and run a taxi. What it does? Taxi also has a diagonal exactly like cosy. Here, all the peaks on this diagonal matches with the one dimensional spectrum similar to cosy. Remember I told you in cosy diagonal spectrum diagonal peaks correspond to one dimensional spectrum here also diagonal correspond to one dimensional spectrum and that entire to taxi spectrum is superposed here as a projection here. Whether you take projection this way or this way does not matter both are same because it is symmetric. So, now I will take the project I have taken the projection here what we will do is carefully look at it how to interpret it. Let us say there are three different colors for three different spin system I will start with this orange color or yellow color whatever that color is. Now, there are two peaks here on the diagonal come down you will see four peaks here cut to couple to something and then come down there are three groups of peaks to which it is coupled to from here come down go here horizontally and you see a peak here and you can complete one square. Continue further come here come here go here and complete one square and this is also another there. So, this this and this we can say are coupled among themselves because 
all of them form a coupled spin system. See you can see point out this is one spin system, this is another coupling and the entire spin system is coupled. Fantastic. All the spins which are coupled among themselves in a spin system are giving rise to cross peaks here. All the three of them see starting with this, this continually go continuously and you can say this, this and three are coupled. If you want to identify go here horizontally and this is one coupled go horizontally this one. So, these three is a similar color they are form of spin system. Go to the next one blue, blue there are three groups here it one, two and three and it comes here it is coupled to this and come down here and here and go here and it is coupled to this. So, this, this and this are coupled. What is the left over green start with this and then go here it is coupled to this does not matter there are only two things it is coupled to that. So, very easily you can identify see the green this to this and this to this so, only two spins are there similar to cosy you can see the coupling pattern exactly this is the way you have to interpret a toxic. So, what do you understand just go vertically like this or horizontally like this that is all you can identify all the coupled partners in one experiment. What COSI does where you have to go in systematic manner instead of that simply draw a vertical line you will identify all the coupled partners or go horizontally that also tells you you can identify all the coupled partners in one simple toxic experiment. So, that is what happens and you can identify everything easily. Okay. So, th this is correspond to one spin system A, B and C have been identified this is like unraveling the overlap. I will show you the comparison of the toxic spectrum of a molecule 3 heptanol with the COSI. What is the advantage of toxic with COSI you will identify. This is the toxic spectrum. What is the taxi? I told you there are two spin systems here. Remember we analyzed the 1D NMR of this also COSI of this one and CA3 is coupled to CH2 and there is in between there is another group and this then this are not coupled. So, there is a breakage in the coupling I told you uh, the continuous all the spins the group of spins coupled among themselves without any breakage in the chain a group of unbroken chain unbroken couple chain with the coupled spin system all the spins form a coupled spin system here there is a breakage breakage in the chain. So, this is one spin system and these four form another spin system. So, there are how many spin systems are there here in this molecule there are only two spin systems. So, if I do a taxi from here, 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 here first this gives energy to this, this to this and this to this the magnetization transfer takes place among all these four groups of protons and all again for these two protons there is a magnetization transfer taking place. So, all you have to do is sit on a diagonal draw a vertical line and find out who are all the coupled partners start like this. Now, this is the group only there are two peaks here start here come here come go here and then go here they are completing the square. How many there are only two things which are coupled here whether you go vertically or horizontally you will see see one and two only two things are coupled. Of course, you can also horizontally find out only two are coupled both because spectrum is symmetric whether you go vertically or horizontally does not matter you can still identify all the coupled spins in one experiment. So, you have identified one group of coupled spin system what next you start with the other one see it starts from here draw a line it comes through four cross peaks go horizontal again like this like this like this there are four such things. So, there are four vertical lines you can draw each one does not matter whether one any one of them will do to serve your job, but I am showing you each of them can identify all the four coupled partners of the same spin system like we saw here in 2 D case here also same thing. So, all the coupled partners have been identified the simple toxic experiment identified two spin systems is it not a better thing compare this with the Cosy spectrum. What was the advantage here? 
in the course what did we do it actually identified both to all the spin systems like this whereas in the case of cosy this was easy you could identify in one shot for the other other thing what you have to do start with there is another peak here start with this go up come again go up go up go up you have to go through ladder here there is no such phenomena just one vertical line or one article horizontal line identify all the couple spin system this is the beauty of taxi you will see the difference this is called a relay transfer cosy directly transfer the magnetization between immediately coupled neighbors whereas taxi does this like a relay which i that's why i gave the example of the baton passing in a running race it's a relay so one spin gives its energy to other one that gives to the next neck like that and a relay it goes like this see this is the 500 mhz cosy spectrum where you can see this forms one spin system and then uh, this is coupled to this this is coupled to this is coupled to this and like this you have to go like that same thing if i do a taxi this what happens very easily in one shot i can identify all these things here i have written a number here 2 3 4 5 6 is written all of them are coupled 2 is coupled to 3 4 5 and 6 everything is coupled here same thing you can identify here but you have to go in a step wise manner it like a step function we go keep going okay there is taxi identified everything in one shot this is the advantage of taxi i gave you several examples and now the time is getting up what i am going to do is i will stop here we will continue with the taxi bit bit more in the next class and then we go to heteronuclear correlation another experiment where we can correlate different nuclei here so far in cosy and taxi we have been doing only homonuclear spins taxi also i showed only homonuclear case both are uh, comparable both have diagonal both are symmetric with respect to diagonal crash peaks are symmetric in uh, both the cases diagonal peak correspond to 1d spectra everything is identical only thing is in the case of cosy you have to go in a step wise manner to identify all the coupled partners whereas in the case of taxi in one one row is just dry a vertical line one row or one column whatever you do you will get all the identify all the coupled partners in a single so and we took one or two examples i'll stop here we'll continue with this further thank you very much